Okay, this is Smiley for Aquarium Outfitters. You've got a 14 gallon bio cube over there. Why, why did you pick the 14 gallon bio cube for your first fish tank? It looked good. It looked good? Yeah. And now are you going to be doing salt water, fresh water? What are you putting salt in this tank? Water. Salt water? Mm -hmm. you gonna, do you know if you're going to do reef or just fish only? Or? No, I don't know. Don't know yet. Okay. So today, let's look at this. You picked out a couple pieces of live rock. Mm -hmm. Let's show everybody what these look like. Okay, we got two decent sized pieces. Do we, did we weigh those? We didn't weigh those, did we? We did not. Okay. Or I didn't. So Smiley, why did, why did you pick those two pieces of rock? What did you like about these versus the other ones you saw? Um, they were smooth and didn't have a lot of crevices. Okay, so they're going to look cleaner to you. They're going to look cleaner to me. Okay. Exactly. Okay, and you've got, let's just tell everybody, you got the new Coral Life BioCube, not the Oceanic. It's got the uh, replaceable LEDs where they snap in. And we've already removed, if you look in here, we removed the filter media that came with the tank. And we are going to replace the bio balls with this eShop sponge. Smiley chose this bag of Worldwide Imports Live Sand, it's a 10 pound bag of Live Sand. And for our chemical filtration, we're going to use the Seachem Matrix Carbon. And for extra water circulation, we've got this Hydor Coralia pump. We've got it at Aquarium Outfitters. So we're getting ready to put all this together. So have you ever kept a fish tank before? Never. Okay, it's never. First Your first one. And yeah. you were going to follow the Aquarium Outfitters uh, Reef School. That's the six-week program, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we're going to about to put this together, and then we'll take a look when we're done. All right, here we are with Smiley. She's got her two rocks. And so step number one, according to the Reef Schools, we're just going to put the rocks on the glass. And then she's going to put the sand around the rocks. So you always put the rocks on the glass first in case you have some fish, like a jawfish or something, that would dig underneath the rocks and destabilize your structure. So a lot of people are going to have more than two rocks that could collapse. And in this way, it's just going to be safer for the construction. So once she's got these rocks situated the way she wants, we will put the sand in. We're about to put the sand in the tank, and we're on week one. So today we got we're on day, one. day one. The tank, the live rock, sand, and water. So all she's doing is adding the sand around the rock to kind of lock it in place. Like I said, this is the live sand. And we're not going to really worry about how gloppy it is or if it goes all in one spot. We could smooth it out after. We put the water in the tank. It's easy, real easy to smooth around after we put the water in. And we picked a 10 pound bag of live sand, typically about a pound to, per gallon. This is a little less than a pound per gallon, but this should be plenty since the rock's taking up a lot of the bottom. I need a bigger home. Yeah. You see there's a big glump of sand in the middle, but when we put the water in there, it's on the rocks, we'll be able to rinse that right off the rocks. All right, we're getting ready to put the water in. This is Worldwide Imports Nutrisea Water. This is natural ocean water that's been filtered and it has their patented formula of nutrients for coral growth in it. I'm a big, big believer in this water. Corals seem to do a lot better in it with it and are much more full, more colorful. So we're going to start with this. This is the next step. And you can see Smiley kind of smoothed out the sand while we were off camera. And she's just going to pour that gently on the rocks in there. <laughs> and you'll see she's rinsing off the rocks of the sand and Once she gets the water in there, she'll smooth the sand out a little bit more. So for half of the water, because this stuff is pricey, 
we are going to use pre-mixed salt water, so instant ocean in RO water. RO water is very important to use in a reef tank because it has zero total dissolved solids. Essentially nothing in RO water to grow nuisance algae or cyanobacteria, so that's why we use that. So at your local fish store, make sure they have an RO system with a digital TDS meter. Ask them to show it to you so you can see that their water is zero TDS. A lot of stores have RO systems and don't understand how they work. All right, now that we get the water and the sand in, we're gonna add that sponge that we talked about. Now we trimmed this eShop's sump sponge with a pair of scissors to fit the compartment. It's going in the middle compartment of this 14 gallon Coral Life BioCube. Smiley's got it wedged in there. Show that. Perfect little fit. Now, we've already pre rinsed in cold water this matrix, Seachem Matrix Carbon, which is just going to drop to the side of that. And that's your chemical filtration. And so that, that pad is your mechanical filter. The rock is your biological filter. And then the carbon, as I said, is your chemical filter. All right, now we got the filtration put in. We're gonna add a Hydor Coralia 240 gallon an hour pump for Nano reefs like 15 gallons and less. I really like to use something in this flow range. This is a circulation pump, not a power head. So it's got gentle flow. She's snaking the cord through the hood. And this is magnetic. Both magnets can be submersible. She's put one magnet in the first compartment and then the other magnet in the tank. And there you go, voila. So there's the pump. Magnet submerged. Magnet submerged in the first compartment. We get our sponge adjusted so it's just below the weir on the first compartment. And then we drop the carbon down here. Now the water's a little cloudy so you can't see it. Well, we just plugged everything in. You can see the water's really cloudy. It should be cloudy for about 24 to 48 hours. You can start to see the uh, nozzles poking out a little bit. You can see some of the rock. You can see what 10 pounds of sand. I'd say it's about, I don't know, a good solid inch deep. Give people a little view inside right now. Can't see much because it's so cloudy, but you can see the filter's working as we wanted it to. It's going over the weir through the sponge, not over the sponge. We're gonna put the heater um, probably in the pump compartment and then we're gonna put a little protein skimmer in a few weeks in the first compartment. And one thing I wanted to point out with these Core Life Bio Cubes is if you look at the side, and I see a lot of people struggle with this, they've got a min and max water level. If you pay attention to that, you will drive yourself crazy you can see the water level we have way over the max. So that's just a water reservoir. Feel free to keep it up as high as we have it here. It's not gonna hurt anything. If you keep it at the max line, you're gonna constantly have air bubbles and debris in your tank. So honestly, I would completely ignore their min-max recommendations. So, day one with the Coral Life BioCube. Hold on, there we go. So day one with the Coral Life BioCube, Smiley, how are you feeling? Great. You excited? I am excited. You have any ideas about what you're going to do with this tank? or? No. No? Mm -hmm. Still just enjoying the, the two rock structure? Yes. All right. Well, we appreciate you working with Aquarium Outfitters today. This is Smiley Dakota and Reef Thews on behalf of Aquarium Outfitters. And this is day one with the Coral Life BioCube. Thanks for watching.